In this first example, we have function f which is mapped from the reals and onto the reals. So our domain is the all real numbers. Our codomain is all real numbers. Our range, though, if we were to graph this function, f of x equals x squared, we get this kind of graph, which has a minimum point at 0, 0. So all of our outputs are going to be values such that f of x is going to be greater than or equal to 0, but less than infinity, which in interval notation is 0, comma infinity. And that's our range. But notice what happens with our next example. For g, g has the same definition. It's also equal to x squared. However, g maps from the reals onto 0 to infinity. So d domain is the real numbers. Our range is 0 to infinity. And that is also our codomain. So this is an example where the codomain and the range are equal. In the first example, they weren't. Your range, however, should always be a subset of your codomain. So every number that's in your range should be a number that you basically pulled from your codomain. Let's look at another example. Again, we have a function that's equal to x squared. However, h maps from the natural numbers onto the real numbers. Again, it helps to graph this. But the natural numbers are only the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. So our range is going to be the numbers that match with this. 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, and so on. Meaning our range is the set of numbers 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, and so on. Now all these numbers do appear in the codomain, but not all real numbers are represented in the range. So here we do see that the range is a subset of the codomain. And just a little reminder, the domain, which I'm sure you've picked up from above if you hadn't remembered it from previous chapters, is all the possible values for our input. The range is all the possible values for the output. We do have something that's called the implied domain. What the implied domain says is that, first of all, in general, if a domain and codomain are not given, we assume that we're mapping the function from real numbers onto real numbers. So if I simply gave you the function f of x equals x squared, we assume f is mapping from the real numbers onto the real numbers, in which case we get the example that we saw above here. Sometimes, however, we have an implied domain. And what this means is that there are values that x cannot be. And there are what I call two neon lights that you want to look for. The first is if you have an even root, especially a square root. The reason being, if you have an even root, then the radicand which is everything underneath that root sign, cannot be less than 0. So we would set this to be greater than or equal to 0. The second neon light is if you have a denominator. And we know that the denominator can never equal 0 because that makes our equation blow up. So we set x minus 5 not equal to 0. And we'll look at some examples more explicitly here.